Ms. Schellenberger. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Ch Chair Kinsey. Um, I'll state the obvious. This is always difficult and very frustrating, um, given uh, the jurisdiction that we don't have. Uh, on the other hand, we do clearly have jurisdiction over protecting coastal access and protecting uh, marine resources. And uh, as somebody said fairly clearly, uh, a radioactive leak onto one of our beaches uh, would definitely have an impact on coastal access. I think there's a nexus there that, um, that I don't think we should unnecessarily shy away from. Um, Having said that, I, I look at uh, special condition number two. And uh, if I'm reading this properly, we're, uh, what is being proposed is that it be a 20-year uh, permit application and six months before that, in other words, 19 years and six months from now, um, the project applicant would provide us with uh, all of the studies and analysis and evaluation A through D. And, and I want to focus particularly on D, which says that the, we are asking them to provide us with evidence that <clears throat> fuel storage casks will remain in physical condition sufficient to allow off-site off transport. <clears throat> and a description of the maintenance and ins inspection program designed to ensure that the casts remain transportable for the full life of the amended project. I would like that information now. Sorry, this is actually the commission's time for us to deliberate. I appreciate the support, but I'm on my own up here now. Um, so uh, all of this, including the effects of the visual resources, wh why? If we have the authority to condition the permit, to ask for this information in 19 and a half years, why isn't it a condition of finding the permit complete before we proceed? Is that, that is actually that not is a rhetorical question. That is not rhetorical, question. it's a real question. So, uh, maybe you could repeat the question. <clears throat> The question is, if we have the authority to, uh, on a 20-year permit, uh, add special condition 2, and specifically 2D, why is it we're not asking for that information prior to issuing this permit? Well, if I understand your question correctly, so we analyzed the effects for 20 years and determined that it is going to remain in a physical condition. We're hoping that after 20 years, hopefully the stuff will be gone. But what we're basically saying is at that time, we need to do a reevaluation of the site conditions then. Because things could change in 20 years. And that we would want new data and a new evaluation then regarding seismic hazards, bluff stability, sea level rise, flooding hazards, things like that. So you have done an analysis of Correct. the physical condition. Yes, which is in the staff report of the physical conditions now for the 20 year term of this permit. Yes. And Dr. Ewing and Dr. Johnson looked at those hazards. Okay, because what I thought I read in the project description was that, um, that the project proponent was saying that they didn't actually, and I won't be able to find it because I didn't highlight it, are not actually able to do um, adequate inspection of these, uh, physical and visual inspection of these casks now. So then you're referring to the casks. The, the I guess I am, yeah. So you're, you're referring to the specific casks and whether they're Safe. Well, is D does refer, special condition D, fuel storage casks. And yet in the, we're asking for evidence in 19 and a half years that those casks are remaining in a physical condition uh, allowed to be, trans so they could be transported. 
and, and then were wanting a description of the maintenance and inspection. And yet I read further in the staff report <clears throat> that right now they are unable to come up with a program where they can physically inspect these casks. Am I wrong about that? Please, I'm going to ask the public to allow the conversation to occur between the commission and its staff. <laughs> so the, 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 the issue that we want to look at at 20 years is, is to make sure that they are movable. Am I wrong? Regardless of what is inside of them, right? Because, because there could be these other potential coastal hazards that we look at under 30253. So we believe that that's our jurisdiction. So we would want a reevaluation at that time to make sure that there aren't cracks or conditions that would cause them to potentially not be transportable for whatever they're going to apply for in 20 years. Say they apply for another 30 years. No, I understand why we want it in the future. I'm just concerned, and uh, maybe I will cede my time and once I find it, I'm concerned that we don't act, have an adequate inspection program in place right now. So you might want to ask Edison, the NRC has certified and reported to us that in their view, these will be safe under federal requirements and will not crack and will, there will not be a problem within the 20 years. I found it. Uh, on page 13, and I may be misreading this, on page 13, second from left paragraph, which begins, in summary, uh, Southern Cal Edison's intended aging management program would include, which is to say, if the grammar is correct, it does not now include the monitoring of environmental conditions uh, visual observation, and then it goes on to say, however, the non-destructive examination techniques, remote surface inspection tools, and NDE methods, employment um, for the utility of their maintenance and monitoring, has not been demonstrated. Nor is it clear when these techniques, tools, and standards would become available for use at songs. My non-technical reading of that is that what we're being asked to approve something that there isn't adequate, uh, that they're admitting that they don't have a monitoring environmental conditions, that they don't have visual observation abilities, and that they don't have um, a way of doing non-destructive examination techniques and then it, I won't re read your own staff report, but I, I'm missing something here because it sounds as if we're hoping that in the next 19 and a half years, this kind of monitoring is, is uh, developed, but we don't have it now, which is to say it would not be in place for the next 20 years. Could we perhaps have Edison address some of this? Were you, were I, you I do believe. This well, I'd actually yeah. rather hear from staff, if you don't mind, first anyway, because it's their recommendation, which is based on this imp these monitoring not being here now. Uh, my understanding that at least part of the concern here, and I don't purport to be an expert on these technical issues, is these issues pertain to radiological safety matters. And that's an area where federal law uh, limits our authority. So staff's focus has been on the safety of the structures from geologic hazards and whether, and it's reviewed and evaluated, the safety of the site from geological hazards for the 20 year period that this uh, permit would establish. And it's also my understanding he has evaluated those risks further out, but this is a 20-year permit and has evaluated whether at the end of that, or is requiring that at the end of that 20-year period, 
there be a reevaluation of the site, a reevaluation of alternatives in terms mm -hmm. of whether there are preferable, geologically safer locations for the waste to be disposed. Uh, but the staff's focus, because of the limitations that federal law imposes on us, has not been to evaluate the radiological safety issues related to the design of the casks. Uh, but uh, Southern California Edison may have more to say about some of the, the technical details. Thank on you. I, I understand that, and it was 2D that raised the flag for me because I don't think that is consistent with what you just said. So uh, actually what I'd, the, I'd like to hear from the uh, man who was here testifying from the regulatory, U.S. Regulatory Commission, Mark Lombard. Can you help me on this? There's probably nobody more of an expert in this room than you are. Yes, it's Department of Energy Watch. So first let me ex understand exactly what the question is. All right, the question is, in our staff report, it says, oh, I said page 13, that's right. It says, and I will try and summarize, but it's hard to summarize technical stuff when you're not a technician. The Southern Cal Edison's intended, a, the Southern Cal Edison's intended aging management program would include now that grammar to me means that it doesn't exist now, that it will exist at the end of the permit. Um, a, a monitoring in, uh, of environmental conditions, and then as some examples. B, visual observation, surface measurements, and other inspection techniques to provide information on the physical condition of the MPCs. Uh, C, uh, using an empty cask, and, and, and then it ends with, however, the non-destructive examination techniques, remote surface inspection tools, and NDE methods, employment methods, qualification process, except it uh, goes on and on and on, uh, and that sentence ends with, and the utility for the maintenance and monitoring of the spent fuel casks has not been demonstrated. Now, my read of that, that is that um, these are all things that we don't know now at the time we're being asked to approve and at the time you were asked to approve, um, but that, uh, and it's also not clear when these techniques, tools, and standards would become available for use at songs. So there's a huge disconnect for me here. I'm not hearing that you in your jurisdiction or we in our jurisdiction of protecting coastal resources actually have adequate information before us to be sure that we would be doing that. I understand. If I could go a little bit into history of the renewal process that we've put together for ISFCs and certificate of compliance, which under the general license provision, the UMAC system is a certificate of compliance that we've approved that a general licensee like Southern California Edison can then take that and deploy it at their site. We have, we looked at the renewals that we had approved over the last 10 to 12 years and we decided that the systems that we had in place, the provisions, the regulatory guidance weren't strong enough for us to be able to approve an additional 20 or up to 40 years for those renewals. So the three renewals that one has been approved last October, it was Calvert Cliffs, it's on the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, another one is Prairie Island, which was mentioned by Mr. Palmasano. Prairie Island is almost to, ready to be approved. There were contentions, so we had, a, had contentions to be resolved. And those two ISFACE, site specific ISFACEs, and a certificate of compliance of VSC 24 helped us to, we built a new regulatory guidance structure, a regulatory framework, and it includes very aggressive aging management programs because when you renew a certificate of compliance or a site-specific ISFC license, you have to have an aging management program and time-limited aging analyses. But the aging management program is where we put our focus on to require very specific methods to be put into place and to push the industry, I'll, I'll use that term push because that's really what we did, encourage, folks might say encourage is a nicer word, but we really pushed them over the last two years to come along with us and collaborate very very intricately on this guidance framework that we put together. So it involves new inspection techniques to get in there 
When you look at the 2,200 or so systems that are sitting on the ground today, dry cast storage systems, about 70% are canistered systems. So there's a lot of them sitting on the ground. Some of them are in marine environments, some are not. So we've been pushing them very uh, aggressively to develop these NDE, these non-destructive examination methods, to be able to look at the surface of the cask that has the heat affected zones, the weld areas are the areas that you're really concerned about. So we want these little robots, what they really are, are miniature robots, with the inspection technologies to be able to detect if there are cracks in those stainless steel canisters in the weld areas, because that's really the areas, again, you're, you're worried about. They've come a long way in the last year and a half that they've aggressively, the EPRI Electric Power Research Institute, which you have a big contingent here in California, they've been working very aggressively on these NDE techniques. So are they to the point where we're happy with them yet? Are they able to detect cracks and, and very well characterize not only finding a crack, but how deep is a crack, how far through wall? They're not quite there yet, but they are very, very close. We had a demonstration at the Palo Verde plant about two weeks ago, and the, the robotic technologies have tremendously improved over the last six months even. So that's probably why you're seeing it's not a now thing, because even we're not comfortable with the technologies that exist today, but it's very soon in the future that those technologies will exist that will be good enough to be able to detect cracks and also detect how deep those cracks are, if that answers your question, part of um, that anyway. Well, let me just ask a simpler question. Did you have before you, at the time you approved this, an aging management program? No, it was not required. It was the initial period okay. of that 20-year period. So, so as the technology improves, which you say is happening very rapidly, you're still going to wait 20 years to require that they provide it to you. Is that right? For this system, yes. That's the only one before us. The, I understand. I'm sorry. Okay. I understand. The mechanisms, because the... We've done a lot of work in this area. The industry's done a lot of work. EPRI's done a lot of work. And the mechanisms involved for the, when you look at stainless steel canisters exposed to marine environments. Yeah. Well, this is exactly what concerns yes. us. And yes. So I, I appreciate that. Um, well, can I say just for the San Onofre area, there's some work that EPRI has done. The report was issued some time ago. I don't think it was last fall, maybe the fall before. But it looked at crack growth once cracks initiate. It didn't talk about how long it takes to initiate, but once they grow, there's a, a range of years in the 30 to 40 year range before they go to a through wall crack, which is what we're worried about, maintaining that radiation inside the canister. So you have time. The, the key is there's time available. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, let me just say to staff and my fellow commissioners, uh, I'm very uncomfortable. I understand the dilemma we're in. <clears throat> um, I understand the jurisdiction difficulties. I also understand that our job is to protect marine resources, coastal resources, and coastal access. And I do believe that the things that the studies that are being called for um, in uh, special condition two, um, 19 and a half years is way too long. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to see these studies updated every, you name the date, but um, every three years, at the farthest out every five years, but 19 and a half years at the rate technology is changing is way too long when we're dealing with something, the potential of radioactive uh, contamination. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, may, may, may I add to, to clarify, the current system in San Onofre, this, this plan is due by 2022. So the 50 loaded canisters today, which are stainless steel, Thin, thin wall canisters has, has the requirement to have this developed by 2022. Based on a number of public comments of the communication panel meeting, I've accelerated that work and I've accelerated the whole tech work to develop the techniques that Mr. Lombard talked about. We're an active participant driving the development of the technology. We're going to have that available and in place well before 20 years, well before 2022. And we certainly will share that. So thank you.